very special episode of The Doctors. It's an hour of amazing before and after today. Ordinary people, extraordinary changes. I was so touched by your story. I want to do reconstructive surgery for you. Their struggles. I've been in and out of abusive relationships most of my life. She had a severe form of hormonal acne. Their solutions. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Maria, come on out. All new on The Doctors. nose, clear skin, and fewer wrinkles. It's an hour of amazing before and after today. And the results of some of the procedures we're about to show you, they're quite extraordinary. But first, we do have some important news. This has a lot of people concerned. Well, if you've been to the dentist lately, there is a good chance you've had an x-ray. They are done millions of times a year in this country, but a new study says those dental x-rays could put you at risk for a brain tumor. Here's what you need to know. According to a new study in the journal Cancer, the radiation from frequent dental x-rays may be linked to non-cancerous brain tumors called meningiomas. The study found those who got bite wing x-rays at least once a year or more had a 40 to 90 percent greater risk of this type of brain tumor. The amount of radiation is so low and meningiomas are so rare that the risk is still very small. Well, the good news is what he just said. The risk is still very small, yeah. but anytime you hear about a connection between oh, yeah. ionizing radiation mm -hmm. and cancer, it's worth getting at least concerned. And you right. can't deny that effect of ionizing radiation. Right. We've seen it in World War II after the atomic mm -hmm. bombs, Chernobyl, things like that. We know that exposure to radiation can cause malignancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's and even a stronger link in kids. You know, that, that radi getting that radiation Scary. younger, the study found yeah. it, in, in less than 10-year-olds when you were getting those x-rays, that really adds up. And, and well, we saw that, risk. too, when they were treating mm -hmm. acne back mm -hmm. when with radiation, and, and yeah. some of these kids developed thyroid cancer as mm -hmm. a result of that. So X-rays for your mouth are similar to the other screening tests we always talk about, right. and it's really figuring out when is the appropriate space between dental x-rays. And we actually have our friend and dentist, Dr. Bill Dorfman, on the phone to weigh in on this. And, and Bill, first of all, I will ask you, uh, just in general, how often should we be getting de dental x-rays, in your opinion? Because we all agree before the show, we feel a lot of pressure when we go to the dentist. And it's before you even see the dentist. No, no, you got to get them. You got to get them. And a lot of times, it's every single year. And you're like, wait a minute. I just had these. Right. Yeah, well, the, the, the ADA, the American Dental Association, recommends that you get a full set of x-rays every five years and then bite wing x-rays every year. But is this solid science that dictates how often we're getting these x-rays? It, it, it is. And, and, I'll, and using you as a personal example, when we fixed your teeth on the show you know, last year, you know, we didn't know that you had a failing root canal until we took right. that x-ray. And had we redone your crown without fixing that root canal, it would have caused a lot of problems. The good news about dental x-rays today is that using the digital x-rays, and that's what we use in our office, you're getting 90% less radiation than the old x-rays. And Dr. Dorfman, do, do, most, do most dental offices now have digital, or, I mean, or, or is it going to be hard to find? I think most, most offices do, and if, I think if your dentist doesn't, that would be a good reason to maybe find a new dentist. And Dr. Bill, we appreciate you as always weighing in. Absolutely. And speaking of x-rays, let's move on to our next hot headline. We're going to look at some frightening x-rays. Now, these are nail gun accidents. Pretty Ooh. painful, right? Ouch. But that's just in the hand. No big deal. But these can really Ooh. injure various parts of your body. But again, an arm, that looks painful. Oh, yes. oh man. But really? I've got something to top all of this. Imagine a four inch nail from a nail gun goes straight into your heart. Ooh. Have a look. Dennis Hennis tried to fix a jam nail gun while he was working and suddenly it fired a four inch nail right into his chest. He went into cardiac arrest in the ambulance. 
The paramedics resuscitated him, and surgeons later took the nail out. I thought I was done. I really did. You're talking about a puncture wound to the heart. He's very lucky. There's so many things that had to take place for him to be alive. It was just a, a wonderful experience to be part of, to be honest with you. It was nice to have all those people working for one main goal, to get him better and to get him into the ICU. Dennis will go back to work, but says he will be more careful with the nail gun. Man. Well, this, this has a happy ending, yeah. and we all know that these types of injuries don't always have a happy ending. That's why we're talking about it. So you can prevent it at home. And Dennis is joining us via Polycom along with Dr. Michael Rosenblum from Cooper University Hospital in Camden, New Jersey. That's where Dennis was treated. All I can think about is CPR being performed with a nail in someone's heart. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to visualize that. But you have you know, to I'm leave that also, in, right? In yes. puncture wounds, you yeah, should always leave it yeah, in. Yeah, Dennis, that, was that a, a, one of your thoughts to maybe pull this nail out? Because that's a lot of people's first instinct. At first, I, I thought about pulling it out, and then I thought otherwise that uh, yeah, that's good. better leave it alone. It's plugged off. Well, hopefully you've seen prior episodes of our show. We always talk about that. When you have an object in place such as that, it mm -hmm. can literally seal the hole that prevents you from bleeding out. So, Dr. Rosenblum, you took Dennis into a controlled environment to remove the nail and were able to sew up the, essentially the, the puncture wound in his heart? Yes. Fortunately, the time of day and everything, that there were just miracles along the way that allowed us to get him to the operating room. We had the heart team there, and uh, everything was mobilized to, uh, to get started right away. Once we got in the operating room after uh, he was uh, uh, prepped, we were able to operate through a conventional breastbone splitting incision down the middle like uh, a lot of heart surgery is done and uh, opened up the sac around the heart, and uh, we, at that point we were able to see where the nail enters, and it, exactly like you say, they were doing CPR on his heart with the nail moving, so it's it, a puncture wound actually became a laceration, and we were able to control it. I was able to get my finger on the hole, we pulled the nail out, and uh, then we were able to sew up the hole, and uh, as they say, the rest is history. You know, and if you're watching the show yeah. and, and you wonder about our healthcare system here in America, you know, this is a true example of Dennis would not have had a chance at survival if it wasn't for this, yeah, just team. a, wow. the teamwork yeah. and the amazing, amazing job that you all did. Um, so kudos to the entire team from yeah. the first individuals who helped Dennis out uh, to, to the operating team. Well, we are so happy that you're doing yeah. well, Dennis. Thank you for joining us, and thank you, Dr. Rosenblum, as well. Thank you. And of course, that leads us to, to what we like to do. We want to teach you how to prevent these injuries from occurring. And we recently received this email from Grace in Tampa, Florida. And she writes, Dear doctors, my teen son has recently taken an interest in building things, created a makeshift workshop in our garage. But I'm getting worried about all the power tools he wants to use. Can you give us some tips to help keep him safe? This is important because summer is the time for home repairs and there are over 400,000 injuries each year that go to the ER from power tools. So we wanna make sure everyone at home knows the basic safety tips when it comes to using these power tools. So joining us right now is the host of HGTV's Over Your Head and A&E's Hideous House, Eric Stromer. Eric, come on up here. Hi guys. Hi, good to see you. So welcome, Eric. Thank and you. Come around here because yep, I want to have bet. you in front of the tools. Sure. I just had a massive surge in testosterone looking at all these power tools. Yes, yeah, doesn't it I do feel, that? I feel more manly yeah, already, yeah, but right. training is, is really important. Yes. But let's go through some safety tips for people, you know, like, like the, uh, the woman who wrote in about her son, right. for someone like me who wants to be the weekend home repair guy. Sure. What can I do to stay safe? All right, first and foremost, everybody repeat after me, safety glasses, ready? Safety glasses. Imperative, gotta wear them. Anytime you hammer, little pieces of metal or wood can come off and hit you in the eyes. And See they make, a lot of those, And they make, eye they make fashion forward glasses, so ladies don't be ashamed of wearing these glasses. We can get nice ones. Also, when it comes to sawing or cutting or fumes, dust masks are imperative. Protect the lungs, and the way you put these on, one strap goes over this way first, second strap goes over the top like that, and then you pinch the nose here and that holds it around the nose, okay? Make sure you wear those as well. Hearing protection, the whining of power tools over time can really take your hearing out. Unfortunately for me, I have now two sons that both play drums, so I just basically wear these all the time. And I go, you guys good? Good. 
So wear these whenever you're using power tools because that wine, okay? I like that idea. And then for uh, tree work, for example, or anything where potentially objects can fall from the sky, definitely wear a hard hat. The other thing too now, this, the nail gun that we were speaking of, this is an incredibly dangerous tool. <laughs> Good call. And what happens more often than not, this safety mechanism here, if this is either removed, a lot of pro guys take that off because then when they frame, they can go quickly. The safety is there to protect that nail from, from disengaging, which is exactly what happened to our friend Dennis. Thank God he's okay. So round of applause for Dennis again. Yes. Yeah. The way this works, air shoots through a hose, it pushes nails out, you do that, you do that, and it shoots a nail just like that, and that's instantly bound together, or in the heart or in an accident. Let's get rid of your mask here, because yeah, yeah. I, okay. I want to go back to... Uh, so, so one of the biggest things with, with... These can be, in some ways, safer, because if you're just hammering all the time, I mean, the, the number of hand injuries you get from that, quite high. If you are going to use a hammer and nail and you're kind of afraid to hold it while you're getting the nail started. Just hold, the, just hold it between your thumb and forefinger and gently tap a couple of times, very softly. Then move the hand and then you can nail that way. Or you can also put the nail in a pair of pliers like that if you're scared and then just start it that way. And if you miss, here, here's what happens. Yeah, yeah, this by the way, this is the sign of a good working man. Okay. The sign of a bad working man is a missing finger, but this is actually okay. So that's All acceptable. Right. Yeah. All right, then when you're using any kind of tools like a reciprocating saw, take the shirt off if it's loose. You don't want it to catch fabric in the, in the machine itself. And then you go ahead and take your hand. If you're not comfortable with a hand on one side, use a clamp. You never stand behind a saw because these have a tendency to kick backwards. So you always want to be off to the side. Two hands on the saw or a hand where you're cutting and then you engage it, right, and cut it, and it's very simple, no problems. Also, there's always a guard on these saws. If the saw does not have one of these guards, do not use it, because this protects you. It shuts the saw off in case it's not engaged correctly. And, and be careful with that opposite hand, because that's where you see a lot of the fingers coming off so often. Yeah, so terrible. Be what careful. Do you, what do you do? You just grab the finger and put it on, on ice and bring it with you? What do you do? Actually, what you want to do is Take the finger, you don't want to put it directly on ice because that can injure the tissue. Okay. So wrap it in gauze, put it in a bag, seal the bag, and yeah. then put that on an ice slurry mixture. Between the two of us, we can build a house. Okay. Yeah. So, so these are, and, and all these tools, I'm assuming that when you go buy a new power tool, yes. you should read the instructions. Please. Um, and, and is there any other resource as far as do it yourself? Yeah, you can find a ton of tips online. Uh, for example, DIY with Eric Stromer on AOL. I'll show you how to do all this stuff. That's a great source. All the internet sources are fantastic. Get some training, have a mentor show you how to use them first, and then you're always going to be checked out. Same reason you went to medical school to learn these crafts. Same thing with a mentor in the construction world. Get somebody to teach you first, then you demystify the tools and you can safely operate them. So, so uh, yeah. I'm gonna ask you. Yeah. Will you, will you be my mentor? I'm available. All right. We're gonna Eric, do this thing. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so it. much. Coming up, do you all remember Maria? Earlier this year, she came on the show to get a fresh start after suffering years of domestic abuse. Well, she recently underwent reconstructive surgery with our very own Dr. Orden. You're not going to believe how great she looks today. Don't go away. Coming up. I've been in and out of abusive relationships most of my life. The first man I was with, he pulled my hair. He broke my nose. He chipped my tooth. I was so touched by your story that I want to do reconstructive surgery for you on your nose. We're so excited for everyone to see Maria after her surgery. Maria, come on out. And later. Hey docs, I've been having pretty bad acne. If you see where Lisa's acne is on her face, I think she would be a great candidate for hormone therapy. You all want to see how Lisa's doing? All right. Come on out. The following program contains images of an actual surgical procedure that may be graphic and disturbing. Parents are advised that these images may not be suitable for young children.
If you've ever considered getting cosmetic surgery, you'd probably want to see a lot of before and after pictures to help you decide which procedure is right for you, especially if you're getting work done on your face. Well, for Maria, her decision to get surgery happened right here on our stage. Let's take a look. I've been in and out of abusive relationships most of my life. The first man I was with, he pulled my hair, he broke my nose, he chipped my tooth. You end up having no self-esteem, even though you try hard. I realized that I really need to make a change. I feel like I was transformed on the inside and I want to be transformed on the outside. The best thing to do for you would be to do two implants. We'll do five Da Vinci veneers right alongside the implants. I'm really excited. I mean, it's beyond words. All right, Maria, you ready? Oh my goodness. How's it feel to have a smile that beautiful? Great, I haven't smiled like this in years. <laughs> and that is one beautiful smile, Maria. <laughs> what a gift, I was so touched by your story that I want to do reconstructive surgery for you on your nose, <laughs> as well as your abdominal reconstruction. God, thank you. And let's take a look at how Maria's surgery went. I'll be working on the nose while he's working on the tummy. We're going to take down and finally refine her tip. Everything between these marks will be gone. Ready? Like always, let's do it. She sustained multiple traumas. Her septum is deviated. We're going to start with that. I'm removing this fractured section of septum. For incision, I have to be really careful to make sure I get the blood vessels before they bleed. This piece is really crooked. That tip has lost all integrity. We need this cartilage to support the tip. So I'm almost done getting all the skin that we're going to resect. It's probably going to be over at least seven pounds. Here we go. There it is, both sides. Because she was so overweight, the muscles of her abdomen went from this to this. So I'm going to pull back these muscles with sutures to bring them back to the midline. This is the hardest thing in nasal surgery, defining a nice, smooth dorsal profile. Well, we need to re-break the nasal bones. All right, tap, tap. Very nice. I'm going to make her belly button now for her. Now the last thing we're doing, you're just going to sew her back together. She's going to be a flat belly. In this case was as difficult as it gets. Every component of this nose needed to be fixed. Et voila, there you go. Feel good about this one. I think we're going to make Maria real happy. Well, I'm here with my partner, Dr. Vithu Chopra. We're so excited for everyone to see Maria after her surgery. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Maria, come on out. Yeah. You, you're going you're to make me all misty eyed. So let's, let's remind everybody how Maria looked before from the front. That's probably where we see the biggest changes. And uh, now look, look straight in there and look oh, at her. Yeah. So let's take a look at Maria's before pictures of her abdomen. And that's the after shot that she let us take, take a picture of. So how are you feeling? I feel great. It's like a whole new life. You look awesome. And Maria, while we have you here, I want to I wanna show everybody what we did on your nose to, to reverse those changes of that domestic violence that you were victim, victim of, OK? So come on over to our magic wall. This is the way you looked before we started. And this is what was going on on the inside of the nose. You had these multiple cracks that you see here on your nose, clearly your nose had been fractured multiple times. You can see this S-shaped septal deviation. That's what was giving you a crooked look to your nose and was causing that nasal obstruction. So what we did surgically, we realigned those nasal bones, 
We straightened that septum for you, and voila, we brought that into the midline, realigned those nasal bones. How did we do that? We had to do what we call osteotomies, re-break those nasal bones to get things straight. And that's how, how you looked after surgery, right? So you see the differences. We straighten your nose, narrow those fractured nasal bones. At the same time, it gave you more definition in the nasal tip. And let's take, a, let's take a look at the before and afters. And we do have to give it up for Dr. Dorfman, a wonderful job. And, and obviously, gentlemen, this was the right decision for Maria, and it, and it shows. And what I love about her look is she looks like herself. She doesn't yeah. look like a different person, just a beautiful version of herself. Well, Maria, you, you look fabulous, Dr. Thank Cobra, you. Dr. Gordon. Great job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coming up, if you've lost the weight but now have a lot of excess skin to prove it, we have the procedure that can fix all that. It's next. Three years ago, I weighed in at 452 pounds. Today, I weigh 155 pounds. Being that big, I have some excess skin left over. The only way to get rid of this is... Tomorrow on The Doctors, the latest and greatest medical breakthroughs everyone needs to know about. If you're dreading a painful mammogram... A new technology to aid in the detection of breast cancer. All new on The Doctors. That's tomorrow. The following program contains images of an actual surgical procedure that may be graphic and disturbing. Parents are advised that these images may not be suitable for young children. We're back. Through hard work and determination, our next guest lost 300 pounds all on his own, which is wonderful. But when he last appeared on our show, it was apparent that he still needed some help. Let's take a look. I'd always been heavy my entire life. Three years ago, I weighed in at 452 pounds. I had started to have a lot of severe anxiety over my heart. Looking at my daughter is what scared me to want to make this lifestyle change. Today, I weigh 155 pounds. After losing all this weight, there's still one thing that's embarrassing to me, and that is the excess skin and the way my body looks after losing all the weight. So what are the biggest changes that you're feeling after losing that much weight? I have some excess skin left over. Being that big, obviously there was more of me back then. The only way to get rid of this is I make an incision down below what I call the apron, and we actually remove all of this. Darren, if you want, I would be uh, privileged to do this for you. Wow, thank you very much. Now I'm anxious to see how Darren's surgery went with Dr. Orton. Darren, good morning. Good morning, how are you? How are you, my good. friend? Today I'm ready to get the skin removed and make the transformation complete. I'm excited for my dad. He did this all for me so we can run together and go swimming and he can be here for my wedding. Dr. Choper and I, we work as a team. I'm gonna focus on your chest, get that looking good. Dr. Chopra is gonna focus on your abdomen. We're gonna remove all this excess skin. His nipple is gonna come up like so. Okay, now for your belly. So what I have to do is make an incision down here, and that way we'll get rid of most of the laxity. This operation, it's gonna take us about six hours. This is a formidable challenge. This is about as advanced as it gets. I'm starting up on the chest. We're gonna harvest the nipples. The first thing, starting his abdominoplasty, was to make a long incision in his crease. There's two dimensions I gotta take the laxity out of. The first direction is this. The X direction, the second direction is the Y direction. I made him a new belly button. I made the hole for the belly button, pulling it out, and there we go. We're putting the nipples back on, so I'm cutting out skin where that graft will sit so that there's nice contact between the bed and the graft so a new blood supply will grow. Now we're ready to start what we call the sewathon. To close this case, we will place hundreds of stitches, hundreds. Five hours later, Darren's doing great. I think we did a great job. 
And I'm here with my patient, Darren, along with my partner, Dr. Rithu Chopra. Darren, how are you feeling? I feel great. It's, it's been how long now since surgery? Uh, just a little over four weeks is all. So I'm ready for reveals. Everybody want to see the way Darren looks now? All right, let's take a look at the way Darren looked before. So you can see a lot of excess skin in the abdomen, the chest. And now... One more thing. So we, have to, we have to put this in perspective. For everybody. How much skin we removed on Darren. As I mentioned, we had five feet of skin. So that's about it. Five feet like that. And my hands are still sore from sewing all this together. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we removed all this skin. And as I said, we created that sew-a-thon. Sure, the easy thing to do would have been staple it up, but we hand sewed everything, hundreds of not a thousand stitches. At least. That's why it's healing so well. It's very amazing. I thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Very much. Thank thank you. you. Up next, if you've tried everything and your pimples are still not going away, don't lose hope. We may have the solution that's right for you. That's next. If you see where Lisa's acne is on her face, I think she would be a great candidate for hormone therapy. It'll shrink the vessels and the uh, redness and swelling from the skin. She will see improvement even after one session. You all want to see how Lisa's doing? All right, come on out. Acne, belly flab, wrinkles. Are you ready to get rid of these frustrating body problems once and for all? Well, today we're helping you do just that and our next guest, Lisa, came on the show earlier this year. She was hoping to clear up some severe acne. Hey, docs. I've been having pretty bad acne. Are there any signs that indicate that it could be a hormonal imbalance? And if it is my hormones, is there anything I can do to treat it? If you see where Lisa's acne is on her face, it's concentrated on the lower part in the jaw in the neck area. So in her case, hormones are pumping oil into the hair follicle and she's not getting better. I think she would be a great candidate for hormone therapy. Dr. Liu here has offered to give you some complimentary treatments to try to get this under control. So Lisa, you've been on spironolactone for the last couple of months and we're already seeing some significant improvement. But because you've been dealing with this for such a long time and you've had some redness and scarring in your skin, we're going to do some laser therapy. We're going to start with the intense pulse light to address the redness of your skin. Fires energy into the blood vessels and the inflamed tissue. It'll shrink the vessels and the uh, redness and swelling from the skin. She will see improvement even after one session. This is the fractional laser to address the uneven skin tone seen on Lisa's face. So what this laser does is it penetrates through the top surface of the skin. It'll break the scar tissue open and actually build new collagen to give her an improved skin tone. Great, that looks great. So that's it for today. I'll see you back in three to four weeks and we're gonna do the next session. All right, great. All right. And I'm here with dermatologist Dr. Howard Liu from Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, great to see you. And treating hormonal acne takes time. How long has Lisa been under your guidance now? So I've been seeing Lisa for the past three months, and in three months, she's really gotten better quickly. Do you all want to see how Lisa's doing? Yeah. So do I. I want to remind everyone what Lisa looked like before the treatment started. All right. Let's see her, Lisa. Come on out. <laughs> wow. Good to see you. So cool. You look Thank amazing. You. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's more than I could have imagined. All right, let's do a side by side here. You, you all will be. Wow. And, and I'm even going to pull your hair back a little bit. <laughs> this is a show about before and afters. And part of the therapy here is taking care of the acute acne, number one, and then the laser therapy to treat the scarring that's occurred. What's amazing to me is you still have 20% to go. And I'm looking at you right now, and I would not have known you suffered from this. So this is just such a great success story. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you. And coming up, we have a sneak peek at the power of stem cells and how they're being used to help you heal faster after a skin biopsy. Stay tuned.
The following program contains images of an actual surgical procedure that may be graphic and disturbing. Parents are advised that these images may not be suitable for young children. Today we're helping you decide which procedures are right for you. And while it may be nice to have the ability to undergo an elective surgery, others, well, we have to get whether we like it or not. Let's look at Darla's story. About 15 years ago, I had a kidney transplant, and my nephrologist informed me that I would be more susceptible to cancer, particularly skin cancers, because of the immunosuppressive drugs that I take. You have uh, two lesions on your face right now that are possible early melanoma. We'll do a wide excision of the suspicious lesions. Because these lesions are on your face, there's always concern for scarring. So after I perform the excisions, Dr. Aronowitz is going to be using a novel and new procedure to close the lesion. He told me about a new procedure they have called stem cell transplants, where they take cells from another part of my body, harvest them outside my body, and then reinsert them in the areas where the skin cancers have been removed. Dr. Aronowitz says that the stem cells will help heal the area and minimize scarring. Let's take a look at how Darla's visit with Los Angeles plastic surgeon Dr. Joel Aronowitz went. So we're harvesting the fat using a standard liposuction technique that we're going to obtain the stem cells from. We'll give this fat to our technician. She'll separate the stem cells from that fat. I'm going to put it in a centrifuge. What will happen is it will separate completely, and we're going to be left with our little amount of stem cells at the bottom. So now we have the stem cells in the syringe, and we're going to go ahead and pass it off to the doctor to re-inject. So what I've outlined with the marker is the area that we're going to be excising. And I'm going to just remove the area of the skin. Here's the specimen that's been removed. We've removed the skin cancer, we've closed the superficial defect, and we've added our stem cells we harvested to the wound and the surrounding areas. So now the procedure is complete, and within six to eight weeks, the growth of the tissue that we added should be apparent. And I'm here with Darla and her plastic surgeon, Dr. Joel Aronowitz from University Stem Cell Center right here in Santa Monica. Thank you both for being here. How are you? Welcome back, Joel. Thank you. Good to Thank see you. you. So how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Um, I'm so pleased with the way this is healed and it's magically almost gone. Well, you. let's take a look. We're gonna show that before picture, and I'm gonna let you, Dr. Aronowitz, take, take us through this once again, what you did in surgery. Well, what we did was Dr. Ellen Horn excised the skin cancer, which was a fairly large defect when it's all said and done, and we made sure that we had negative margins. In other words, there's no skin cancer at the edge. And then the defect was closed. Meanwhile, I harvested some fat from Darla, which is one of the bonuses of the operation. Everybody likes to lose a little fat. Darla doesn't have much extra, obviously. And then separated the stem cells from the fat. Then the stem cells are added back to a small amount of the fat that's injected into the defect, both to fill the contour depression, the defect there, as well as to enhance the healing. What do you do specifically to separate the stem cells from the fat? So the stem cells exist throughout our body, but in our fat tissue, we have a lot of stem cells. These are all adult stem cells, not embryonic stem cells, of course. What we do is we need to disperse those cells apart, not just spin it down in a centrifuge, where actually you could see my technician there. She separated the cells using a special process. This can be done right in the operating room now. It takes about an hour, hour and a half. Then we have a small quantity that actually represents millions and millions of these tiny stem cells. These are the youthful regenerative cells in our body. We add those to the area where we need that regeneration. We sometimes mix that with a small amount of fat, just like the mm -hmm. fat injections that you're doing, to create a better contour, but also add those additional enhancing stem cells to aid in the regeneration and healing process. 
And you brought some other before and after photos. Yeah, I have other a good example to show that, you that of a this. skin cancer patient. A lot of skin cancer patients, the, the skin cancer is excised and the doctor just lets the wound heal. This is a very traditional and accepted way to treat a skin cancer. This, this woman, Gail, had a very large defect on her cheek, you can see. At a week after her closure and stem cell injection, she's shown in the middle, she's still a little bruised. And at six months later now, you can see that the contour defect is filled in. And even the scar, although she has a scar, if you look carefully, the scar appearance and the softness of the skin is remarkably improved. That, that's an impressive result. Thank you very much, Dr. Aronowitz and Darla. You look great. Coming up, we are revealing the very latest non-invasive facial treatment to rejuvenate your skin, make your wrinkles virtually disappear, so you better stay tuned. Coming tomorrow, the latest and greatest medical breakthroughs everyone needs to know about. Then, when it comes to prevention, there's an app for that. What if I told you a heart attack might be predictable by a single ring of a cell phone? Plus, the futuristic stroller that not only charges your cell phone, comes with headlights and... One touch of a button. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah! Oh, my God! All new on The Doctors. That's tomorrow. And then on Wednesday. Welcome back. Whether you're considering a tummy tuck, a nose job, or even a facial, there are some things you should know before deciding which is best for you. Here's one question that we all likely face sooner or later. Is there any way to reverse the aging process and get rid of these fine lines and wrinkles? Well, to help answer that question, Dr. Orton's back in our green room checking out the latest treatments for wrinkles so, Dr. Orden, take it away, my friend. That's right, Travis. Hopefully, we can answer some of those questions. And to help us do that, we have Tevi, we have Marcel from the M Day Spa right here in Beverly Hills, and our patient, Danielle. You look like you're ready for something, right? I am. I am. So, what are you going to show us today, Tevi? So basically what we have here is called the Jet M Pill. This is our most popular procedure in Ospar. They've seen amazing results. So basically it looks really strong and powerful, but it's very soothing and it's very relaxing. What we have here, the way that it works, is it takes this high pressurized stream of air mixed in with water, which are the two basic elements of life. And we have sodium chloride with it. We have minerals in it, nutrients, and serums. Can and I feel it? <laughs> You can actually I'm use sorry. this on your hand, I'm too. I'm sorry there, Danielle. I, I, had a, I need a little treatment. That, that does feel good. <laughs> it does. It feels very awesome. relaxing, very soothing. Um, basically, the way that it works is the sodium chloride will detoxify and exfoliate the skin. But then at the same time, the vitamins and the nutrients coming out will penetrate the skin. And this, in turn, will moisturize, it will nourish, and it will smoothen out the skin tone. It will hydrate it, leaving it firmer, more plump, more youthful, and glowing. Good stuff. How does that feel? <laughs> yeah, it's refreshing. Yeah, it looks like you're into it. So <laughs> is, is Danielle going to see results today? or does You it take will many see treatments? results. Every client is different. You can see results after one treatment. However, we recommend doing a series of three to five treatments. You can come in once a week or every other week for this, whenever you have time. And, and you brought some pictures with you before and after of other patients that uh, have gone through similar treatments. Yes. On the first set of before and after pictures, you'll see... This patient here, we had one treatment done aggressively on her. And if you look closely, you can see the fine lines and wrinkles around her lips have been completely diminished. And this was only after one treatment. So for the second before and after pictures, this is on a treatment with pigmentation. This was after a series of only three treatments. And if you look closely, you can see that the pigmentation has now lessened up, it's lightened up, and it looks smoother and clearer. The blemishes have now disappeared. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much for coming today. I think you're going to enjoy it. And stay tuned. My doctor's orders are next. If you have diabetes, keeping your blood sugar under control is key. On today's Prescription for Health by our friends at CVS Pharmacy, Pharmacist Yushima Thomas and I will give you the skinny on what foods may help you lower your blood sugar levels. Oatmeal can help control blood sugar levels because it's high in fiber. 
and complex carbohydrates, which means it's slower to digest and it won't quickly raise your blood sugar levels. And vegetables like broccoli, spinach, and green beans are high in fiber and low in carbohydrates, which make them ideal for people with diabetes. Eat treats in limited amounts. They add lots of calories and little nutrition. Also, find sugar alternatives. Learn to sweeten your food with natural sweeteners like strawberries or blueberries. Fruit contains fiber, which helps slow the absorption of sugars. And as always, check with your doctor with any questions or concerns about your health. For education and tips, visit cvs.com forward slash diabetes. Hey everyone, if you're heading for Hollywood, California and would like to sit in our studio audience, please log on to our website at thedoctorstv.com or call area code 323-THE-DOCS. That's 323-THE-DOCS for show tickets. Come on down. Today we revealed five amazing before and after procedures, but are they right for you? Well, my doctor's orders, I have five questions to ask yourself before undergoing any procedure. Number one, who am I doing this for? Number two, can I live a happy life without it? Do the benefits outweigh the costs? Do I have complete confidence and trust in my doctor? And do I have any doubts? And just make sure you feel like those questions have been answered before you undergo an elective procedure, mm -hmm. as you always all talk about. Do your homework. Great tips. And I do have to say kudos to you, thank Dr. Gordon. Yes. Thank Excellent you. results thank in the you. Thank you. today. And I do want to thank all of our other guests. If you want more information on anything you saw today, visit thedoctorstv.com. Thanks for joining us. Woo!